<laughs> yep. Or some people go like pouring they, liquids. They like, oh, real? Yeah. Millions and millions of views. Like it's just insane. You you, you it's haven't okay. seen it. It's okay. <laughs> So I was just saying that I want to I, I want to start a offensive ASMR. Hello, fuckers. Hey, little motherfucking guys. Yes, exactly. You're right. Haven't you got anything better to do? <laughs> Man, now about about this. Uh, so from now we just consider that we're in, and Taylor just okay. puts an end. When you when you like, did you see this? What was when when was the first time? When was it that you that you caught Mister here doing his thing? Um, at the beginning of the year, yeah. Someone sent to you? Uh, yeah. Someone sent it to me. It was like, look at this motherfucker. And I was like, oh, yeah. And just started, uh, just slightly just kind of listening to different bits and pieces of his chat. And then, um, and then realized kind of how fucking dangerous his cordial was. Um, so you actually engaged, like you, 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 you listened, you, you went to have a look or you were just like, what's up? Well, I'd, I'd seen it online and seen it like on the news and different bits and pieces. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I just slowly just keep listening to what was happening and I'd already previously done some mahi around this, this this kupu or these kupu co-governance and, and what what that actually means and it kind of this label that was uh, it kind of you know it kind of created this whole fear around co-governance that was already happening in Aotearoa so yeah I think the label co-governance is what people have that big problem with where they don't really understand what what it's all about and it so you fast forward to now like yeah it's just um and with this tour is trying to simplify and maybe give a better understanding from a maori perspective of what that means because yeah this fella's gone across the country uh you know only telling it from one side one side of the fence and completely neglecting the fact that there's 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 another neighbour there that have a have another perspective, and in some of the cases, it's just like with some of the shit that he says, it's actually batshit crazy. Mm. His <clears throat> is where he's coming from. So, uh, yeah. So I started just quietly listening to it, and then um, and then I realised that he was coming to Carpeti. And uh, did you think you wouldn't make it because there was some backlash, right? They were not allowing Maori in the in the well, talks. it had already happened in Taitoko, um, yeah. So, and there was a bit of backlash there, and then I kind of carried on on my own kind of chats, and then I did this this corridor for with M9, and then two weeks after that chat, he was in Kapiti. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I have to... My whakata was that I'm going to go and listen to this twat speak. Um, and I had to sit in the room and, like, look at him, you know, kanohi ki te kanohi, face to face, sit there, f- listen to the chat, feel the room, um, feel the, the people in the ahua of the people in the room. And then I... St- when I was in the room, I just slowly started jotting down um, little things in my, yeah, just little things that I heard. And <clears throat> in this Māori Elite tour that I'm doing, I've created five pieces of art that go from what he said in that meeting. Um, and what I'm doing is kind of, showing the other side of it but it was in the beginning it was really um i was like fucking enraged like this motherfucker this motherfucker motherfucker this motherfucker so there was a lot of fucking anger <laughs> uh, you've turned me um there's a lot of anger like you motherfucker um but what's <clears throat> kind of what's actually happened with this artwork it's taking this hateful like 
really ignorant corridor and what I've hoped to do, or my intent is to spin that into something that's positive. And, and now if you've seen our work before, and even the kupu hori, it's a derogatory term for Māori. So, and my whakaro is to take, that's the ars spun in it, and is to take something that is considered, you know, negative and try to spin it in a way. But the Māori language is such a beautiful thing. You can take something that's that may present itself as negative and actually um, spin it into a way that is actually quite positive. So it's kind of not <clears throat> not putting uh, mm -hmm. Petra on his fire and kind of creating our own little ahi and and the artwork is kind of like the the kingling. Man, and we from, get, yeah. I just got a cut in right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, part I taught Tahi. How the hecky moly <laughs> did you get in the in the kua like through the door? Like obviously you oh, yeah. are Maori. I am yes. Um, <laughs> I am a Maori elite. Yes. Yeah, no, um, yeah. uh, it was fucking interesting. We actually, yeah, my mum, who's Parker, was like, she she came with me. And all my mates that tried to get in there, they all had mokokowai and they got like, nah, no the one. Denied. Wow. Yeah, and even when I drove up, um, the security guards on the side were like, oh, no, the protesters are over here. <laughs> and I said, nah, I'm not protesting. I actually am coming for it. And he was like, oh, and he went to go talk to another security guard. And I just went, Meow, and drove up the hill and parked up and then got out of the car. Mum just got let straight up. And um, I just kind of walked straight in, slipped in, shook uh, Bachelor's hand as I walked in, and um, went and sat down and just. Did you zipped. say and a hoi hoi? <laughs> no, nah, was, nah, that was like killed up. Walked in and he and it was a bit of like a, oh, and then I walked. I just kind of got in and sat there. So me and a couple of mates were sitting around. Um, trying to record as much as we could. But you did ask a question, right? I got at the, I got at the end and I just asked them, um, you know, what's your what what is a Māori elite in in your what's your Fakato and what's in the Māori elite? But before this he kind of showed photos of <laughs> you know in his corner there's like there's there's kind of four to a thousand Māori elites in Aotearoa. And I'm like, name them. Like, seriously, name them. And he shows folks photos, and the photos he shows are like Rawari and Deb. Like, <laughs> and I, and for, these are people that I know, so I'm like, oh, yeah, sweet. Yeah, these are these the only ones that you've got. And, and, and he kind of, it's hard to say, just trying to put like um, anyone that, any Māori that has um, been successful or any kind of mm. Māori that's in a, um, in what you would call a higher position in terms of a Western way of looking at what a higher position is, uh, is they're an elitist and they're out to get all the money and they're not sharing it with <clears throat> their their iwi or their hapu. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of just bullshit chat that he's talking about. So I suppose, yeah, the, the kore that I'm coming from is that, um, yep, yeah, I've kind of taken on the Maori elite persona in it, this in this act. Yeah, it's bullshit. But there's a lot of people going for that. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot of Maori the, too. That you, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. So so how how is the what is the work in your? I'm, I'm not saying that is your obligation, but like you you you're raising the flag. What is the work to to bring more consciousness? Like to to actually put into like to make people understand the whole story because that that's a complicated thing to change people's minds sometimes you just have to have a conversation engage in a calm yeah. way it's like what we do here yeah a lot of the times i bring people that i disagree with yeah but maybe through a conversation we'll we'll get there yeah definitely so how am i gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> i think Marty have just had a fucking pretty out of it year this year eh? um with especially after the elections and what what is to come um and i think for me personally 
I think this kind of tour is, uh, yes, there's there's this serious element around it and there's there's a bit of um, education that I hope to put out there. But it's also just to have a bit of a laugh at how fucking stupid his corridor is. And, he, and even just Hell to have that. a laugh at us. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I've said this a few times, you know, a lot of either Pākehā or Tauiwi that are looking into our world, they only ever really see potentially sometimes a serious part, you know, the, the, the porphyry that's, you know, or kapahaka where they're just like, ah, fuck, you know, or there's a serious matter that's going on. They, don't, they never really get to see you know, out the back of the marae, <laughs> you know, where all the funny shit happens. They never get to see, you know, all of the funny shit that happens and how fucking hilarious Māori are. Um, and we're dark, man. Like, we've, we've got we've got this... Uh, levels. These cuts. levels of deep cuts that come, like, and it's, it's actually, like, comedically, it's fucking hilarious. Um, so it's, it's... This whole tour is kind of about... Yep, we're addressing certain issues, um, but it's also not serious. It's a very like it's it's a bit of a rip on on Maori as well, but also just the whole kind of stupidity of of this <clears throat> Maori elitist that mm. um, that comes from his chat of what he thinks an elitist is. It's pretty um, cool, my bro. Like, uh, we here on Fitiago are pretty stoked to come along to Talk tomorrow. Obviously, your M9 chat earlier this year was yep. like off the hook. <laughs> um, I was just telling these guys about the M9 and Matatini and stuff, and just Māori tongue in its entirety at the moment. Like, our parents didn't have that. Like, we've got such a platform now mm. internet, podcasts, social media, etc. Yeah. Getting out on the whenua, going and meeting the people, whatever. Yeah. It's cool. I will take the day off Mahi keep my kids home from Kitta to watch this stuff. Cause yeah. I'm like, this is history, bro. Like this, this, you have to understand this is amazing. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, there are levels that are so funny. My kids, um, they're at Whadakura and the things that they come home and moan about are so dead to care. Like they're moaning about their free lunches. Oh, we had auntie so-and-so's beef stew again today. And we didn't want the bread. Oh, I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> Did you bring me some? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, no, it's um, I mean, from from me, it's I grew up kind of the generation where, you know, when I went to high school, being Maori wasn't cool. Kilda. Yeah. So, you know, now kind of nearly a decade after starting Hori, um, is you know. I see it, especially in the last kind of decade, like people wearing um, our clothing and or like, you know, really trying it because, you know, now, you know, and people will be like, well, Māori was always cool, but back when I was a kid, it fucking wasn't. Nah, it was yeah, not. It was like, it was something that I was embarrassed of, to be honest. Um, and I went to, you know, kōhanga reo, kura reo rua, like, you know, and then when I went into finally a mainstream spot, it was actually not cool to be my So own. did he care. Yeah, like, so now when I – and you see this, it's like this – I don't know, in the last decade, it's this monumental shift that's happened um, within Te Ao Māori, and, and it's just like now it's just like – it's fucking cool to be Māori. Yeah, it is. And <laughs> and you've got to give it up to like the likes of Ngātama Tua yep. um, and all our tūpunu who came before us because of the mahi. They put in the hard yards yeah, and hard. we're actually reaping the we benefits. Are. You look at this kōhanga generation yep. who are coming through. Hana oh yep. my God, yes, girl. Yeah. Kia ora. Like, that's incredible for us. Yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, I'm not like an old salty dog that's like, you know, but yeah, I've I've witnessed it in my, I've seen the shift it's, and it's only going to um, just keep pumping and keep pumping where what those guys did, you know, 50, 60 years ago, um, you know, rebelling, rebelling, um, has created this, this space for us now to be able to flourish. Um, and especially in an art sense of like a, creative sense you know it's 
um, it's not just Māori that uh, that are on this. It's a lot of Pākehā that are just like, a lot of Tauiwi that are just like starting to shift their, mm-hmm. the way they think in terms of what's happened. Well, because know. most of the time you're told something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even that you believe, like that you have a, it's just what you're told by mainstream education, by media. Mm. So when you when you shine a light in things that you, you, you never pay attention before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're like, oh, this makes sense. Mm. It makes more sense, right? Yeah, hard. There's a movement. Yeah, and, the, and it's, yeah, mm. we're only a, you know, the movement, like, if you look at like Tami and all of the, Natama Toa and all of those, you know, Whakatupuranga Roman or up in, in Raukawa, like, mm. they they decided, you know, they had a 50-year plan that they were like, you look, the deal's, the deal's um, not happening in our in our hapu. They got the three iwi together, um, Te Ateawa, uh, Ngati Raukawa and Ngati Toa, and they built this amazing plan where Kohanga, Te Wānana, Raukawa, Kura Kaupapa, everything happened, and I'm a product of Whakatupuranga Rōmano. So, you know, that, yeah, it's it's fucking amazing because when you, you know, coming from Kohanga and then into, like, Kura Reorua and then going off into mainstream and then completely just losing my way and then coming back to Te Wānana, Raukawa, coming back to Ōtaki and then being involved and in, in, in having my little part in this journey as well, um, it means a lot, like, to me. And it is, I'm real stoked because, you know, my kids are now <clears throat> looking at us doing this and and Hannah it's pretty and in, all of these oh. amazing people that are, you know, um, that are coming up and it's just like, obviously, we, not like, we're watch not out, like, but it's like, Fucking look out! Like yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. coming. Like confidence. We're getting on yeah, now. It's yeah. We our our times, and you see this new gen that's coming in. Uh, sorry, yeah, um, yeah. They are um, they're on fire, and it's cool. It's actually quite nice to to watch this happen. And um, that yeah. that actually um, you, I so I did a little bit of research because oh, I you tried to, a little bit of research. You got your notepad. I got my notepad and. and my, <laughs> Hold on, and then they got this. I'm not going to even give them any of that time of day. Um, I read some of the things, so I've been a fan of yours, following your art and everything for the last few years. I own so many of your clothes; <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Um, but so I saw your you did a hiding it last year. I think it was might have been the year before. Are we able to be called Aotearoa Aotearoa. now? Yeah, um, which was the play on Hobson's Pledge, and you were doing the Hawley's Pledge, right? Yes. So, kind of following along that a little bit, I'm just a average Māori, I suppose you would call. <laughs> <laughs> not elite. Not, not quite elite. Um, but, so I did look into the Hobson's Pledge a little bit today and over the last week, and I was just... Wow, bro. Like, who are these Māori elites that you are getting this information off like some of the things I read like uh, we are takers giving does not enter the heads of the elite Māori <laughs> rather it's all about taking and getting mm. and I was like wow yeah don't know any of those fellas um, we apparently oh sorry you not me because I'm average um, <laughs> brainwashing and grooming the children in our schools aroha mai he ho I'm pretty sure that's not in my job description yeah um uh, radicalizing young and impressionable Māori. Yeah, I'm sure we heard a little bit of that kaka kōrero in the campaigns in the recent few months. <laughs> and um, the message elite Māori is sending to all non-elite Māori New Zealand: We're the only people who matter. <laughs> As for the rest, we couldn't care a shit about you. All you need, or what? All we need for you is to provide us with ongoing cash flow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you went to a hui and actually listened to that. Well, this is well, the Hobson's <clears throat> Pledge run. Hereke, aye, because it's it's Hereke ngari kau, same fano, same fucking shit chat. Um, but the the Aotearoa one was really about looking at someone. It's it's Don Brash and 
in this group of people that um, completely have it out for Māori um, in everything that we do. Um, and it's a constant, kind of constant uh, colonial kind of thumb <laughs> that Stay they just want to put you in your in your box. And you know, once you start to start to pick up on that, you know, I, I've been under that thumb for far too long. And you know, when you when you actually come out and challenge them on it, and I actually went and listened to one of his corridor. Uh, and during the court at all, he mentioned the word Matauranga Māori probably three or four oh, times. Yes. Like three or four times he mentioned it. And when it came to the questions, it came to me, I said, uh, do you actually know what the word Matauranga means? Because you've said it probably three or four times. Do you actually know what the word means? And he looked at me stumped. I said, like, can you tell me what the word means? And he couldn't tell me. And I, I, I was sitting there, like, and I said to him, well, matauranga means, you know, knowledge, you know, understanding, okay? And Hobson's pledge says, through knowledge and understanding, we can move forward as one. But you don't even know the fucking word in Māori for knowledge and understanding. And that is your statement for Hobson's pledge. So if you're trying to give out the fact that you have knowledge and understanding and only through that we can move forward as one, you need to fucking learn the word that actually means knowledge and understanding and then talk to the other group and then try to move forward as one. So it's it's such a contradiction chat that he has. And it's funny because he, he actually was stumped and I said, you don't actually know the word, what it means. And I had to actually explain to him what the word matauranga meant. And he fobbed it off like he read some script from Apidana Nata around matauranga Māori, but he didn't actually know what he the actual word meant. What, he had an inkling of what he was trying to say? Yeah. Oh, my God. So he didn't actually know what it meant. So, And that's this statement piece. Like, if you see Hobson's Pledge, it mm. says, through knowledge and understanding is how we move <laughs> forward as one. I'm like... But you didn't even know the word for it. So um, his chat is much like the Bachelor chat, much like the Seymour chat. And it's just like, for me, like I'm looking at these people going, you guys are not Mm -hmm. even in this conversation. Your conversation is only one way. Mm -hmm. So what I hope to do with the tour is to bring the other side, (laughs) is is to... Bring that other perspective into this whole elitist corridor. I, I cracked this terrible joke um, just before you got here. Oh, <clears throat> love terrible so, jokes. There's probably going to be a few so, of them tomorrow. Um, <laughs> if you were like a, a you know a caramel cream like I am growing up in Aotearoa, hmm. um, we used to get this joke cracked because I'm the throwback of my fun. I'm the fair one. Everyone else is. Pung lawyers and gets beautiful tan. Love you so much. Um, <laughs> but it was, I used to get this all the time. Like, um, what have you and Michael Jackson got in common? Like, I don't know. You are not alone. <laughs> I am plastic too. And these guys didn't get it. And I was like, plastic mouldy? Like, is that the opposite of elite mouldy? Like, it, like. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a shirt. That we have, <laughs> that uh, is is a part of this tour, and it's called yeah, it's Maori Elite with a question mark, and just a little bit plastic, and um, <laughs> that comes from the M Nine chat because they they interviewed all these protesters, and when they asked them, you know, what is what who are the Maori Elite? None of them could give an answer mm. to it. <laughs> who are these people? <laughs> and then one gentleman said, you know. Um, to the interviews, like you know, did you did you get paid out? Uh, <laughs> she's like, "What are you talking about?" And she's like, "Well, did you get money from your iwi?" And she goes, "Oh, yeah, the iwi's been helping me, but it's not kind of how it works." And it's like, "Yeah, that's right, because all the plastic berries <laughs> take all the money." <laughs> and I, and so the corridor was around like this. What is 
what is a Māori elite? And then what the fuck is a plastic Māori? <laughs> so, and you could just, I just had to say that and everyone would have, listening would be like, oh, why did they say that? But um, I suppose growing up, it was it was a thing that some Māori got. They just felt mm. like if they didn't know their deal, if they were brown on the outside and not on the inside, as they used to say. A bounty then, bar, you know, as my bounty sister calls bar, herself. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, horrible, horrible I, I get things. calls from my sister yeah. now. She goes, she goes, hey, Mads. I'm like, hey, sis, how's it going? She's like, I don't have my, did I say it right? Yeah. Anyways, this is a dollar Mary call. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, we call it dollar hucker. Um, yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, fuck. It was something that was real. Like, people mm. actually, and a lot of people that I know still feel that way. Right. Um, and I think it's important for them to know that um, if you if you fuck a papa Māori, there's, there's... No that's, question. That's it. There's no... We're not measuring that's blood quantum. There's no, like, um, oh, you're just the... Oh, yeah, just the, the, the kind of bounty bar or the thing. It's just like... Part Māori. Fuck a, fuck a papa Māori... You're Māori. And, you know, my mate the other day, who I never realised was from Kaitahu, and she and she said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, but just not really Māori, but, you know, just, and I was just like, what do you mean? And she was, oh, you know, and I was like, I never fucking knew you were from Kaitahu. And she was like, oh, yeah, I know, it's just like, but, yeah, that still is very much present mm. today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, yeah. There's, like, this invisible form of measurement as to how mouldy you are or if you are mouldy enough. Mm. Bro, yeah. for you to tap into the arts as a, as a way to bring peace to yourself as well, I would say, because a lot of people would react mm. to what they, they listen, especially when it's quite offensive like that, and that's when big discussions start and sometimes fight and as we can see in the world a lot of shit goes wrong because of the way that we react yeah so how was it for you in your journey as a young person tapping into the arts and when does the, the designing and the clothing started to become a thing um it was always there but yeah the catalyst for Hori kind of started in university um what did you study digital media design yeah so it started there and then it laid dormant for another kind of six years um and i see i see that uh this art that we've been doing as as me on my decol decol journey um and when you look at the kupu hori in itself <laughs> it's quite a challenging <clears throat> ingwa to have bestowed on me, you know, my name is Hohepa, um, but Hori was bestowed, given to me, because um, I knocked my front teeth out, and I was the only Māori, like, speaking, fluent speaker, pretty much at our kura. The other was my brother, um, at my high school. So this this name was put on me, and I hated it. Um, so. When I started doing the artwork and signing the work off as Hori, it kind of just, it just, that's how it kind of created. But then I saw it as a way to, it's a conversation starter in itself, just the name. Um, and our co is around starting conversations and kind of making people aware, but also throwing the wet or at people, like throwing the challenge at people, um, whether they're Pākehā or Māori. Our, our biggest critics, are Māori. Kia ora. Our biggest critics are Māori. And, and that's Fano as well. Um, because you're questioning kind of colonial ideologies that has unraveled itself in our own culture. So when you start questioning tikanga and kawa, <laughs> people start to get a bit like, oh, what's this fucking cunt up to? You know, so you're... Yeah, sometimes it's um, it's hard because you're just like you're taking hits from everywhere, but then you actually you're actually just starting those conversations. Like, well, what? That doesn't seem like that comes from a Maori perspective, mm. or 
he ao Māori tira kao. This is this has come from a pake or a tauri um, side and somehow unraveled itself into our tikanga and, and our kawa and now all of a sudden we have to wear black at a tangi. Like, yeah. you know, yes. so this is like all of those things like that, that you're like, wow. Well, and, and, and I've always been that hoha kid. Well, not hoha, well, the kid that asks parts I am like, oh, why is that like that? Because that doesn't make any sense to me. Because we're told this, but then this is what happened here. Why is this mm-hmm. like this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when you start to question stuff like that, uh, a lot of Māori... <coughs> get kind of like Ooh, who's, who's we this? didn't talk about those things yeah you, you you know you're not supposed to challenge uncle at the at the marae although, although some uncle like fucking go for it you know and i love those ones <laughs> um but then but then the, the, they have to be humble enough to to accept a conversation right? oh yeah it just depends on where you're doing it you know, how you are, how you how started, you how you approach it. It's not like yeah. I'm going to sit on the pie and try to challenge you. A little bit of a toe patu patu on the yeah, pie yeah, yeah. on the same side. It's nah, probably so not going to go down. Carl, that's not my, that's not my jam, eh? Like, when we talk about that, it's just like, oh, you know, the pie is yours, but, you know, give me the paintbrush, though, and I'll, and I'll paint something there. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it, I mean, it... I say we do we do get into some big discussions, especially in Otaki. You know, it's a very um you know, it's it's one of the probably um richest towns in terms of Te Reo Māori in the country. And I'm pretty proud to kind of come from there. But it's it's also one of the heartiest uh real towns in the country. So it's like, you know, Especially when you're doing kind of stuff that's a bit, maybe a bit of a bit different. Um, yeah, you know, people constantly will, we have little chats, with, but we've got a pretty safe crew there that, you know, especially with the with the elite tour that I've had uh, discussions with, like, what do you reckon about this? I would love to be a fly in the oh, wall so in you, your so cafe, you opened, you open up, you came and, and you... Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I imagine yeah. like Otaki being well, what I know of Otaki, it would have been quite broad and open, and they would have been coming in with their notes. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a few that yeah. Well, there's a couple of things that that you'll see tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to give too much of it away, but there was a couple of little like jokes that I had to have a chat with some mentors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're just around. You won't what give you, that away. Just kind of like, what do you reckon? And they were like, pff, you know, they There's were a laughing. Line, but but you got to cross that line. Well, or? not not cross it, but like you know, the 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 reaction I got from most of them was like, only you can pull this off. I think they might be right because you've got quite a good platform, eh? But it's not even that. It's just like just your, I suppose your ahua, yeah, and the way you are. Um, but there will be people. That probably will be like up to son. <laughs> but um but for this for this co papa I think it's um it's just yeah, it's we'll we'll find out tomorrow. I can't wait. The first one. I'm really re- nervous about it. Oh, we'll be a good audience. So, from us. so first show of the Maori Elite Tour in Fitzyanga. What Fitsianga. a privilege. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were the first yeah, the first ones to get to me. And we're like, do you wanna do it here? And I was just like, I don't know anyone in Fitzyunga. That's what happens when you stalk the people you love in New Zealand. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, I was like, the only one I know is Tip. I was like, the only one I know is Tiffany. And yep. I was like, I don't know anyone else. And they were like, it's all good if you want to do it. And I was like, fuck, do you think, you, yeah, okay, sweet ass, man, we'll just go for it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked with all the venues that reached out to us. Yeah. You, um, sorry, I just, uh, hepate tōrua. Okay, fine. Um, you just spoke about your mentors. Mm. Kawai Rato, if you can. Oh, yeah. Well, one is my mate, Rangitifu, who is like our Fai Kōrero um, teacher at Tuana Rokoa. Right. And, yeah, I mean him. Rangitifu. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, you know, I'm, 
he just lives around the corner from me. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah. And I, and me and him, we meet up, you know, we were doing like quite like after to one or like, or we would meet up and, um, you know, go through little bits like, you know, I have to do this fucker toe here. Um, and it's been fucking amazing actually. Just little hours at a time, just sitting with him and just, just learning like one-on-ones, which is really cool. Gosh. Um, just, just, yeah. And, and I got him around like a few weeks ago now and I, and I told him this joke and he was like, <laughs> oh, fuck. And he was just like, oh, shit. Cause he, and he was like, oh, well, but there's been a couple of, you know, I've been, I've been really lucky. I've got some pretty amazing, like, mentors and people that I I get to <laughs> hang out with. Um, and and just mates that I spoke to. And then I did, I did it to, I did a dress rehearsal two nights ago in the gallery. Oosh. With, um, with no, just soft. with me and Nikki. Oh, yeah. nice. And just took them through it all. And there was a couple of questions that came up about a couple of things. So I had to ring a couple of mates that were like, you know, my mate Harper, who 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 grew up at you know in Ōtaki and Ngāti Hui and, and told him all these things that he was just the same. He was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh shit, the yeah, same chat was like, oh, oh, only you can, <laughs> only you can pull this. Yeah, off but even now. then, it's like, oh, you know, oh, it's can just, you? <laughs> well, yeah, hard out. I was like, you know, I don't. People like go on about getting cancelled and shit, but I was just like, you know what, fuck. I'm so just... late, you already bought the tickets for yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there, there's bits into that. But yeah, tomorrow night's going to be like, I'll take you through it. It's I put some tikanga down. Um, that kind of protects me, not you guys, you fucked. <laughs> 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 just, um... Also, with your whānau, um, <laughs> all my whānau here in Fitiang watching, I need a babysitter, our poor poor, so my <laughs> mama go. can come there to the go. show. I will offer you Kai. Oh, I know. It's so many emails we had were like, oh, it's, we had so many, like, actually emailing venues going, oh, is it okay if I bring my kid? Uh, could I bring my daughter? Could I bring my thing? Oh, they're like 16, but they'll be with me. And I'm like, you fucking do not want to be sitting next to your 15 year old <laughs> kid or your 16 year old kid while I'm doing this. Jordan Just take my off. fucking word for it. Like I told my mum, I was like, I'm sorry, mum, but you are not coming to this. Okay, so mum, my mum who's 65 is not coming? No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. that your mum is fine, not his mum. Your mum, my mum. I was like, I don't want my mum oh, okay, to see yeah. me doing these things. Doing these things, <laughs> <laughs> well, saying these things and saying these things mainly, but yeah, and, and supposedly in Fagade, my sister and and potentially my dad have bought tickets. I don't actually know yet. I haven't talked to them, but yeah, that's gonna be a fucking hard one. Anyways, it's all right when you're on stage. You've obviously been on stage. You can't see fuck all anyway. So you're a good brother. Yeah, no, I can still feel them. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um. Oh, it's, you know, I'm Kahununi boy, kind of, you know, it's a bit sexy. Mm. Of course. You know, I mean, we're sexual beasts, us Māori, so, <laughs> like, fucking, oh, well, you look at Kahununi and all my wahi here, they're fucking <sighs> sensual motherfuckers, so, you know, it's another corridor around colonisation, I guess, I suppose, about, like, <laughs> but man, we're fucking, you know, we love a bit of a fucking, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of dick jokes. Uh, good Kahanunu. <laughs> Didn't really get that trait from Kahanunu, but <laughs> but yeah, it's um, there's some good. Yeah, it's 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 a bit rude. Yeah. So it's not R18, but it's at discretion. It's fucking R20. Of... It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah. I I said to them, I was like, look, you can bring your kid if you want, but yeah, it's not. But no. fuck seriously, it's an R18 show, and if you want to vouch for them, but then you want to sit next to your kid, you have kids, eh, bro? How, how old are they? <laughs> how old are they? Uh, so we've got this four. Uh, Sienna's our oldest, twenty three. Then we've got sixteen year old Jet, 
uh, eight-year-old Tello and six-year-old Taika. I have a friend and um, her they kids, are not coming. They're not coming. <laughs> her, her kids, her kids are seventeen now. Uh, uh, no, sixteen, and she was telling me, "Oh, I thought, I thought that the hardest part was." done and now it's a whole new challenge you know like dealing with a 16 year old how was your journey with 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 parenting and, and navigating different ages and and your because you're involved with artists you you are all over so yeah. where they pay attention to everything that you were doing how how was that relationship at home uh just come a bit closer bring yeah, the mic sorry. over to you bro now all good you. man bring it closer yeah, to you. yeah yeah sorry there you go how's that all good um sienna was so when I came on the scene, Mia had two girls and Sienna was 14 and Jet was seven, just turned seven. Um, so I had the 14 year old straight out the gate and, um, hormones. <laughs> yeah, no, she was pretty, to be honest, Sienna was pretty, pretty cool. She's really, she's really like cool, like yeah. way cooler than me and Mia. So it's like they're always cooler than us. No, she's actually she's been here on this earth before. Yeah, that's how cool Man. she is. So, um, I mean, we had our tussles um, as you do, but she was a bit of a nana actually. She wasn't. Um, she didn't. You know, I oh, mean, she did her fucking her stuff and uh, everything like that, but she didn't really drink that much. Um, she didn't go out and party that much. <laughs> it was a bit of a tell her, tell her. I was just telling you about my girl's first party here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So she can drive you. That's good. Oh, she's a shit driver. No, oh, damn. No, but Jet's no. the driver now. She's our learner driver at the moment. And she's um, she's horse fanatic. So same oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. Doesn't drink. Doesn't doesn't party. Horses. Like, yeah. She's just, that's her thing. Just got her new car. So she can pick up hay and be a farrier. Fucking, she's she's good to go. Good. <laughs> Into music, loves music. Main. Yeah. Um, and Tello's another kettle of fish. She's the hurricane. She's more like me. Yeah. So she's uh, the creative psycho. Uh, she's awesome, but she she. <laughs> I saw her recently in Ohakuni getting amongst the. Vines. Oh yeah, yeah. She was out. She went out and partied to Troy's thing of that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then Tyker's the he, he's Mia, yeah. He's the he's the softer, kind of chilled out. Modi tote. Yeah, but he could. He's got that little bit of me. Bit of spunk. Yeah, yeah. He, you in there when when yes. you were needed. Yeah, definitely. Well, I hope get some grandkids. Be, um, it'd be nice. <laughs> we're we're at that me. point that they're just like, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Nah, it's good. Kitties keep you fucking honest, eh? <laughs> keep I, you I humble. I say um, to my friends who don't have kids. Oh, yeah. They're like, you know, what's it like having kids? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> having kids is like equally the most incredible and the worst thing that ever happens to you. <laughs> like, they, literally, they're like, all your best, most amazing and your shittest, worst <laughs> qualities yeah. in a mini version of you yeah, and the yeah. person you procreated with, <laughs> just needing you all the time for like 25 years. But then it amplifies your mission, right? All the beautiful things that you're doing, that you're doing they make even more sense. Yeah. I mean, when I look at the two little ones... Um, I, I always said that I didn't want to do, I want to keep them uh, in hopefully as much as I can in a in a kura environment as opposed to a more mainstream environment. That's not giving any mainstream place shit, but it's just like that's my kind of dream for them. Um, Tello's, uh, she is the most freest person ever so she's gonna be she's gonna be yeah she's just one of these you know um, she's a bit of a magnet eh? she draws them yeah she's an enigma she just don't know um what she's gonna what she's gonna do but, but she's it's gonna be beautiful to watch and be a part of yeah yeah she's 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 a firecracker she's the one that we're like what's this what's this little being gonna 
become. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where Taika is very, very set in his, yeah, he is, he'll be a kind of kid. He'll probably grow through that, that whole thing for the rest of his life. And I went to boarding school and, and I don't think I could, I don't think I would send him to boarding school at all. And I, he would be the fourth generation that went to this school. But I was like, nah, I think he's nice and is, he's a homeboy. Yeah. Yeah. He's Nothing nice. Nothing wrong with being a homeboy. Nah, nah, he's, he's there. So we were talking about that in the trip up. On the 10 hour trip Ooh. up. Holy shit. Titianga, you better come to the show tomorrow. Eh? <laughs> Fucking 10 hours drive. Yes. Ah, damn. It was behemoth. But and the roads, eh? Just a lot of road work. Well, you know, me and Nikki were like, "Oh, this is so amazing! Look at!" I'm like, "What the fuck? <laughs> look, look how beautiful oh this gosh. place is! Oh, oh, look at that river!" And I was like, "Oh, that's called Waikino." <laughs> 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 and they were like, "Oh, it's so beautiful!" It's like this is bad water. <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, true." I was like, "I was like, wonder what the corridor was behind that." But um, it was just mm. stunning. I. Yeah, as I was saying, I used to come up here and surf heaps in Orimana. Oh, shit. Afana used nice. to come up here. And, you know, definitely a few um, New Year's is spent in Whangamata. Ever get arrested? No, but close. <laughs> close. Straight Got a couple up, of bashings. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then... Um, Must have been in the 90s then, eh? It would have been... Uh, when did we go? 96, 96 98. 2001. Oh, yep. 2001. Yep. Yep. We were f 14. <laughs> yep. No. You're like, wait. 2000. How it was 2000. Yep. Yep. And we got a couple of good hindings. Guts bolt. Yep. Got kicked off the cliff. Oh. Off oh. the side of the cliff by the surf club there. <laughs> Yeah. And then we ran naked up on the beach. It As was you do. It was a like, fucked up night. Oh yeah, there were I three know some nights. Some of the lifeguards from Fongmata, and f you don't want to hear those New Year stories. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was out of it. Great times, man. I loved it up here. But yeah, Onimana is pretty close to my heart. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's um. Did you bring your surfboard? I did. Did you now? Yeah, I did. What are you doing tomorrow? Hopefully, going out to um, check a couple of places. Oh yeah. Yeah, but it looks pretty small. <laughs> Today probably was the day. It was the day, but it's um, all right. We'll forgive you. But it's all right. I bought a snowboard as well. <laughs> <laughs> I had this big trailer and I was like, I'm not leaving home without that. And there's a snow planet in Auckland. I can't go to put what it. else is in the trailer? Oh, clothing. Heaps of clothing. Merch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, heaps of clothing. And all the artwork is jammed into the car. Um, because I didn't trust the trailer. It was fucking mm -hmm. hard pulling a trailer, man. I think there was the half. There was at least an hour ad. Would have been yeah. if you stuck to the speed limit. Yeah. How long is the journey now? With how long has it been since we started the the brand? So it started in two thousand and twelve. Yeah. So eleven years. How? What was the size of it? How? How did you start? Was it just you? Did you have a mate? Did you have a t like first move to get it going? It was just me. Yeah, yeah. I came home 2011, end of 2011 from London after like five years traveling the world. Fun. Yeah. It was fucking fun. <laughs> <laughs> Best place, worst place? Best place, Canada. Maybe oh. Costa Rica. Ooh. Cool. Canada's pretty awesome. Spent a couple of the times. Snow. snow, yeah. Um, our family were a bit of snow bunnies. Brother's over there now. But um, worst place? Shit. London was hard. Lon London ate me up. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it'll do it. Yeah, it chewed me. It's just a lot of partying. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. I... and uh, yeah, so I ended up leaving and lived in Cornwall. For like yeah, a just, year, nearly two had years. To distance yourself. Yeah, had to distance <laughs> myself away from the from the place. And mm -hmm. um, my mates were all playing rugby down there, so yeah, they got me a, a job. But it was it was all my travels for those four or five years that I kind of came to the terms how much of a kind of asshole I'd been, kind of running away from my culture. Mm. What yeah. what stemmed you to like go on that hiding? I like because. 
I did a little bit of research earlier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you what you like all but f- forgot your deal or your culture or are you, are you stepped away from it and you've come back like what made you step out into the world or what was it that made you go traveling mm. put all that in yeah. the backpack and yeah well yeah I've told this story a bit but yeah at the age of 14 I made a conscious decision just to stop being Māori. Okay. In my head. Okay. Yeah. That's how... Um, and that was it. And that was enough to push you? Yeah, it was. It was, uh, you know, in third form, I kind of was doing school C Māori. Yeah. Was like first in my class. They wanted me to do bursary in four form. And like, I was just like... Cool, you know, not nah, not into it. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be pigeonholed as that kid. The token. So, yeah. So I kind of stepped stepped out for like um, probably the next twelve years. Oh wow! Yeah. How were those twelve years? You travelled for five of them. Yeah, travelled for five of them. Finished uni, came out in the middle of a uh, recession, oh, right yeah. in two thousand eight, and there were no jobs. So I Perfect. was like, "Fuck this! I'm um, <clears throat> going to Aussie." So I went to Aussie, like all, all a lot of Mozzies went, and. Um, Painted some houses, and then a mate rang me and was like, do you want to come to Canada? And I was like, done. So, yeah, I left and didn't come home for like five years. So, yeah, um, but it was overseas after, like, kind of meeting people and people kind of speaking to me, like, going, oh, fuck, you're Māori, like, can you do us the haka? Like, can you do all of these things? They loved our culture, mm. and especially in England, that – they like there were some of the rugby teams that I played there. They wouldn't let me get out of the bus unless I did them the hucker. Like they fucking what? loved everything about you know, you know the All Blacks and you know not you know. And I said to them, "Is like, do you know that hucker is actually from my iwi, like Nati Tauranga Tira? That's Te Reo Paraha's haka. Like, there's actually it doesn't. That's the that's, that's the first the part. First, you know, first, the Kiki like- Kakaka part. So I." Was, yeah, and they were like, what? And they were genuinely like, fuck, we've got this this Māori fella that's playing for us. Um, and it was then that I realised, fuck, I've got something so beautiful and different and I've been blocking it out this entire time mm. um, that it was like, it's time to go home. And, yeah, that's what I did. I, fuck, I was like, I'm going to go home. And, yeah, so the first collection that I ever brought out was the, yeah, 2012. And, yeah, it was called the Dirty Laundry Collection. And that kind of, I suppose, you just propelled me all. into this into this world of art. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, some of the pieces in there kind of got hold, the media kind of got involved with a lot of the pieces because of it, the timing of some of them. Um, and what I was speaking to, I suppose, yeah, created this kind of, oh, what, who the fuck this is? Was this it person? a comfortable place to be as a Maori person in the fashion world? Because we always hear about the fashion world. Yeah. Like, were you, were you feeling good about the partnerships, the people who were close to you or there were challenges involved as well along the, well, it was a, it was a, it was a Maori fashion board called Mirumoto. And Atta, um, she was the head of this, and she was like, "Look, I want you guys. I want you to enter into this thing." Um, so I entered these prints that I'd done in that, and from that, I won the actual th- that my end of that competition. And probably from that, the list of designers, there was this one print that got blasted across the media. Um, only because of what was happening at the times in the terms that was happening with um, Tummy Itty and the terror raids. And mm. this this piece has kind of become probably yeah, one of the most infamous pieces of art that I've ever put out. Um, because it kind of... Because I did media studies, I knew how the media kind of works, but this kind of spoke to the way the media... Um, can spin something 
for for the entire country to believe in. So this whole chat around, you know, we've got our own terrorist now. His name's Tommy Ant. And at the time, Tummy was actually in jail and they were trying to pin terrorist change, uh, charges on him for what had happened up in the Uruwetas, you know, and, and this piece kind of moulded both Osama bin Laden and Tummy's face together. And the court it all was around, um, you know, the media's manipulation and the way that they perceive Māori to the to Aotearoa. We've got this terrorist... Mm. <clears throat> Beware this Maori. And it's just interesting, I thought, especially with um, Rua Kinana and what happened uh, there, that, you know, almost 100 years later, that they're um, prosecuting another tuhoi <laughs> in the same exact way. It's and interesting, those cycles they and patterns they mm, yeah. paint and create for us. Yeah, so... And then when you look back, like now, um, but at the time it was fucking, it was it was eye opening for me because again, Maori were like, "Who the fuck did this?" I'm like, no, I'm just trying to start. I'm on Tommy's side here. I'm trying to start, start this all, conversation. It's like this is this is how the media picture us. Um, this is actually what the entire country mm. f- thinks of this. <gasps> Of this person, um, us, of of us, I, yeah. and um, be scared. You know, this is scary shit. And you know, Tommy will say it himself. He's a fucking pussycat. He says it all the time. And you're just like the fear that they that they created after those um, raids. Mm. Um, so it also talked about well, what did you guys do to an entire community? You went in and terrorized an entire community um, trying to hunt for the so called terrorist. terrorist. Mm. So, yeah, that's where I was coming from with this piece. Um, but when you, you know, that's why art's so subjective. When people mm. are looking at it, they're mm. like, and a lot of Māori were like, and, and Maria, love Maria, is Tummy's wife, was like, who the fuck did this? You know, and she was just like, I was, yeah, (laughs) and you know, the terrorist is gonna come after me now, (laughs) yeah. But so it was many years later, and you know, when I met Minnie, and she's like, Oh, it's you that did that, and you know, and now, like, it's just it's interesting, like, because that was the first ever collection I brought out, and I suppose so straight off the bat, you were just like, was boom, straight one. into the media spotlight. Yeah. The, you're, you're a radical. Straight you're political. On. Yeah. Who and is this fella? Yeah, and then they took me to NZ Fashion Week and I showed it at this NZ Fashion Week. And they went... And, oh, oh, no, 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 no. It was Peter, who's Māori, was the head of New Zealand Fashion yeah. Week. And um, who's a dame. <laughs> and um, she was like, we cannot put this out. And I was just like, what? And she's like... So the fear was mm. was huge. She was like, two hoya coming. You know, oh, they're yeah, probably people. out there. It's going to fucking get kick out. <laughs> and you know, two hoya. Like, they're hearty motherfuckers. They're hearty, bro. And I was like, this is not going to happen. Like, this is totally not going to happen. I'm like, you watch. And then I was just like, oh, fuck. They let it run right towards, like, minutes before she came out back and was like, these aren't going. And I was like, you're being so silly. Anyway. They walked. It was fine, but after that, mm. I was. It was like everywhere, mm. and this this piece that this random guy called Hori did. Um, <laughs> this random I, Hori. It really, uh, yeah. It kind of it, it's propelled, and then I guess what I learned from that was um, how powerful art can be, um, and when people look at that, they're just like. Holy shit, like, yep. you know, so there was definitely something there out of that. And I think it's just, I say this all the time, I don't try to poke people with a stick, but the, some of the issues that we're talking about are quite hearty, you know, issues that involve yeah. our people, like co-governance and what what does that word mean? And, you know, all of those mm. things, again, which is this label that's being put on co-governance and now people are afraid of it, like, it's a scary thing. We need to be afraid, and it's not fucking scary. 
Uh, all. Nina, Nina Simone said, right, that uh, for her, an artist, um, you cannot be an artist without, without reflecting the times. Yeah. But for you, having all this understanding now and, and going after your, your history, your culture, do you feel like it's always relevant to bring up what's relevant or the historical context is also interesting for a country that deals with so many? Yeah, I think it, it's a um, having a foundation like, you know, Ma Tauranga based on whether it's treaty or he whakaputanga. Mm -hmm. um, we, we literally just finished uh, one in at our gallery um, around te liter literacy. Um, and just like making sure that you're, you know, I wouldn't go out and say that I was a, a treaty <laughs> academic or was, you know, anything like that. But I have, a, I have some understanding mm. around different parts of article one, two, three, um, he whakaputanga, like it's just, um, I think that's an important part that reflects in the work that you're doing today. But yeah, a lot of the work that we do is very relevant on what is happening like now, you know, whether it's within a political space where well, a lot of the work obviously this year has been very political mm. because I saw this happening last year, <laughs> you know, you know, you could see <coughs> what was happening um, you could pretty much just about bet that Labour probably wasn't going to get him. Yep. Um, and my and my my thing was, we need to watch out for our own that is coming out through here and and act coming up. We need to we need to. And I and I went to Waitangi and I spoke at Waitangi this year about it in February. Did you? Yeah. And, and and I went there and we had a meeting and I said we need to watch this guy coming through. Um, it, it is my my fakaro that this motherfucker is dangerous as fuck. Um, a because he uses his culture to weaponize his fakaro, and he doesn't have again he, <coughs> he, he sits in the same category. As these people that are, you know, they only have one, are mm. only looking at one side. And he has the other side of the fence, but he doesn't want to acknowledge it at all. Mm. You know, when he gets asked anything about um, Māori Dim, he, yeah, he'll say, oh, yeah, I'm Ngāpuhi from, you know, but I'm also this and I'm also that and I'm also this. And like, I saw an interview the other day and, and Tina and other things like, they just fucking asked you about your Māori side mm. that doesn't actually um they just want to know that they don't that doesn't cancel out the other side no, that yeah, you've yeah, got yeah, 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 yeah. just answer the fucking question yeah. um and so when you've got someone like that who's purposely not wanting to speak about that side and but then happily um willing to go out and like kind of denounce marty in these in these different ways i'm like this motherfucker is actually dangerous because he's Maori. Yeah, that's it. And it. and it's hard because you're just like, so yeah, it was it was last year when I saw that kind of I was like, this guy's fucking gonna, he's mm. gonna get into government, and I was just like, we need we need like to seriously think about this like mm. this guy. I had um, mm. multiple kind of do with my mama who's always followed politics forever. Mm. <clears throat> And her fakara was, you know, Bob, like, you got to vote Labour. Yeah, like, yeah. if you vote National, we're fucked. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know? And I felt like that was kind of the division they called it on the fakara of so many of, like, my mum's generation. But then there was this division happening and Labour and National weren't catering to the boxes that the, I don't know, general consensus were looking for, what have you, that they were like, oh, here comes this other fellow who's promising us some other bullshit. Oh, he looks all right. Yeah. Oh, oh he's also married too, so he, he's not bad. And I was like, <coughs> no, 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 no. Like, mm. 
what you're saying, like he's using him his own culture as a weapon mm. towards us. Like mm. I love what Te Party Māori has done and the corridor they share and how they campaign towards our rangatahi and stuff because our rangatahi are the ones that we're all voting for, right? At the end of the day, we're trying to make a change for our tamariki, our mokopuna. They're the ones who matter. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, there's certain people in my life. I love you guys so much, Fano, but I cannot talk politics with you at all because look, look at ourselves, look at our Fano and the mummy we've all had to live through, mm. and what's happened in this last election. Mm. <sighs> yeah, that, it's, I, it's it's just hope that it's a short. A short term but um i mean yeah i don't want to be like the big fair fella but we need to um be aware like yep. be fucking super yeah. aware yeah i think it's important like you know saying about your kids is like making sure that they're they're aware even at my my kids age my little ones you know they're like oh what's the you know and just explaining to them yeah. like this is what's happening at the moment. <laughs> and unfortunately, we got to understand that things hit one side and then boom, it hits the other side. So being in opposition, knowing how to do that, that job well mm. of, of being out there, being an active voice, mm. asking and, and being loud, mm. sometimes is even more relevant than, than being power because yeah. then you, you want to be heard. You want to make sure that, that you're also protected by, because they are our employees at the end of the day right they're working for us <laughs> they don't do a great job well, but you know let's yeah. not forget that i know but it, it is isn't it if you if you look at it they are the ones that we put to work for us mm. there so being that opposition being in that space of like cool we gotta yeah it was cool like you know obviously that what he said like you know we've been a fucking opposition for 180 <laughs> years i think we fucking do this and but the i th you know I'm I'm so fucking proud of of Hannah and Doki. You know, mm -hmm. um, they that's just two more voices, at the tip strong tip. fucking voices too. Mm. Like you know, Doki's a good mate, and <laughs> it's just you know, you know, I talked to him. And I was like, "How was it, bro? Like his first day, like when he went <laughs> in, and he's just like, easy, cuz." <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, got this shit. I got this shit. And I was just like, mean. And he does. Like he's He's on. He's so on. And it's just like when he got in, I was like screaming at the television, eh? I was just like, oh fuck. Oh my fucking god. I think most like you know, to take it in all down like that, like, was was massive. Was fucking probably the biggest thing that actually happened, you know, and Hannah as well, to take, On to election, take those right? to two take down, two. Um, you know, and me to them both, like mm. and I and 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 to them all. But it's just it just shows that, you know, this this generation that is coming through, is just <clears throat> yeah, being the, people are a little bit more politically aware than I fucking was, man. Um, I love that about my kids. I, I went to Tamaki a couple of months ago, picked them up from Kura. We're cruising down the Thames coast. Mama, yeah, I'm not tohu. And I was, which ones? They say national <laughs> and act and greens. And, and so we had that corridor about politics. I certainly wasn't having corridor about politics on long car rides when I was seven. Like, nah. But they're so aware of it. And they're like, oh, well, that's, that's not right. And, mm, yeah. That's cool. I think that's amazing that we're actually having these corridors. There's a lot of criticism towards social media, but at the end of the day, it, it's it's bringing all the information, which can be bad, mm. but can also be great mm. because it comes to you. It's something that probably you wouldn't have access to. And if you're there, if you're tapping into it, suddenly you're young and you're like, oh, cool. So this is something that I relate to. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I love the movement of lower lowering the aging. To sixteen, oh, to sixteen. Yeah, it's it's fucking. They just do it. I tell you what, when I was sixteen, there's no fucking way I would be voting. But there, are, if there are a certain amount of people that are sixteen that are willing to go in and vote, 
and have an actual conscious like I I want to vote for this. Fucking let them do it. Yeah, man. But 100%. if there's, if there's no. um, you know, a, a group at Angatahi who are protesting against climate change yeah. and protesting mm-hmm. about gender rights and exactly. equality, well, they're going to be the same with Angatahi who are going to be like, actually, I don't agree with um, this, this, and this. Yeah. And I suppose in like 20 years, we'll be looking back and going, look at these motherfuckers. Holy shit. You know, same as, yeah. you know, the, you know, the tummies and 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 all of them then looking at us going look at these motherfuckers and then like 20 30 40 years we're like look at these motherfuckers nice. like holy shit like and i think you know long game you know 20 20 years down the track it you know i think the political thing will probably switch to a way that we knew you know it, i hope it won't be a national or a Labour, it potentially will be a Green and a Māori Party. Oh, so like you the, know, it's the moe moe are. It, well that could tell to moe moe are, yeah. Aye. But like you know, if you think in twenty, thirty years, like I remember, I, I, I'm old. I, you guys probably won't know what this is because like way back in way back in that are we used to have this um, show called Inside New Zealand. Do you remember that? And I remember it must be like late nineties, early two thousands, and they had this, you know, what would a New Zealand look like in twenty ten <laughs> if this party and this party and this party kind of thing. And um it honestly, that 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 little inside New Zealand doco of like the Greens and Te Party Māori, they had I think like toy Tuhoi um Tane on horseback, you know taking road tolls at one side and they were still gravel roads and stuff but their whenua looked amazing and mm. they lived in peace and like for me as a 11 12 year old girl i was like oh you know greens and tapati maori like that's what i want for my future <laughs> but you know like <laughs> let's do something like that aotearoa like let's paint that picture what that might look like for our future like i know i uh, what is the dream i was you know i've i um you know, in my voting thing, I always vote, voted Greens. And, um, Same. But my candidate vote always went to Te Pāti Māori. Killed it. Um, and especially last, the last election, Deb was like, like, candidate, candidate. Like, that was their game. That was the game that, um, that they played was like, vote the candidate in, vote the candidate in. And then, so, yeah. Went party green, Deb in, like, you know. And this year, it was just, like, no-brainer. Both, Two ticks, te party Māori. Both te party Māori. Um, and, and much love to our, our Greens whānau. Like, that's, they're on the same... Mm. Um, they're on the same page. They might not meet in the middle for some things. Um, but, like, my, my whole thing was when I was... My mum's, you know talk to her quite a bit politically i'm like why the fuck do they wait so long to join like this like why isn't labor and greens and and te Party maori speaking like, fucking in three months out from or six months out before the before the actual fucking election like because surely if i can see it who's not like um, but if most of the people that are kind of a little bit politically minded were like, well, this is, it's going to be these two versus these, All of these, these ones. three. Mm-hmm. Not not even yeah. fucking thinking that Winston Winnie would come from where he did. But like, oh, why don't they? they get together then and go, look, the rest <clears> of the country <throat> knows that this is this is the only game plan. Why don't you guys get together now? And start seriously strat- strategizing in terms of how you're gonna do this. But like I, this shit. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I, I suppose it's not it's just not the way the political thing works. I don't understand it, like the insides and outs of what happens in that place. But like, yeah, I was like, why don't they just work together now? Mm. Here's a really peculiar thought. Yeah, but I'm like, I suppose that that's what swings votes. You know. Now what? Oh, these guys are, oh, fuck, I'm not going for them because of this. I'm going to 
So they keep to themselves Keeps until playing. it yeah, yeah, until yeah, it gets. Yeah. And I think, I think towards the end of the debates, it was it was pretty fucking blatantly honest that, like you know, Greens and Māori were like, "Come on, yeah," you know. And I and you saw it in the debates, like they were both, you know, toe tuckled each I one's corridor, like like, mahi to each other, like I and I was just like. Why didn't this happen fucking three months ago? Mm. But I don't know the strategic know ways the of what they're and what they're trying to do. But yeah, that's that was my my but just but just to see that respect, eh? Hey, because it's something that I often ask politicians. I'm like, can can you name good things about the other ones? Like, are you capable of saying good things about the others? Like, are you always criticizing? So when you see that at least happening, I know it's late. You're right, but it feels good, mm. right? When you're watching something and you're like, oh, there's some agreement. They're actually supporting each other somehow, you know. Like it, it just feels good as a human to yeah. see humans oh, cheering I'm, for each other. I mean, yeah, fuck. I, yeah, I don't know how how it all works in there. And like, but would it's you put a fucking hard? Job. Would you put your hand up? No, no fucking way. way. No I love, way. Um, some I, of the um, heartiest quarter all I've had, especially this year around the elections and politics, have been with my some of my tightest homies. Who've never fucking voted before? All oh, right. The biggest Mona Lisa. Shut and up. I'm like, oh, hey, yeah. like sending TikToks, sending articles. Like, bro, just read this two minute article. Watch this one minute yeah. thirty second. Like, just just to give you a little bit of matauranga on the topic, kind of thing. Like, oh, yeah. honestly, you've just got to vote, bro. Just vote. Turn up. Every yeah. vote counts. Yeah, hard. I don't know how what I don't even know what the non-voting thing would be, but um, yeah, fuck. I messaged pretty much my, a lot of <laughs> people was like, "Bro, you fucking like you know." Well, just that video of the Maori roll. That's that's brilliant. The one that you did. Oh right, with, yeah, with yeah. the sandwich. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so you were creative. You 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 got it right there too. Oh yeah, because you know, humor and. Comedy is palatable, way. Eh? You can, you can, you can take that. Anyone can take that and be like, oh yeah. But when you're like, and I try to, because I'm a, I can be an angry motherfucker. Yeah, there's a side of me that's like, nah, fuck you. Mm -hmm. There's that real side of me, and um, but screaming at people and ah, at people. It sometimes just gets lost and mm -hmm. your your whole chat just no one's listening when you're screaming so but using humor like with like a lot of our work that we do and, and a lot of the kind of maori content kind of creators or whatever, whatever they're called or what, you know it's um people can take that yeah. you know and they really um and i think it's 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 an awesome way to to get your your co papa across is to use humor and yeah for things like that I mean I think Tiao Pifarangi is the best at doing it <laughs> he's so fucking good it's just like you are just you are zoned in and you're just like <laughs> every single fucking every thing time, he does it's time. like you're just like yep. Like, Nailed you know, it. it's, it's just nice. There's things like that when you, we can, you don't have to, um, be real serious and have that chat or be like, fucking, you need to fucking do this. Cause like, you know, mm. when you, when you have that comedic value to your, um, to whatever you're doing, your art or your, the way you, um, conduct yourself around, it's just more palatable. People can take that in and they can, they're like, even if they don't look like they, people know what funny is. Eh? Oh yeah. So that even if they might not like the thing that you're saying, they're like, oh yeah, fair enough. I'll give that one. But you know, so it's it's actually, I'll take that. It's a fucking art. It's oh, it's man, actually yeah. like, and one of the bros, Joe, uh, Joe D, fucking, <laughs> he is so like perfect at doing it. Like it's an art. Hey, eh? watching mm. like I sat with before I went on this like did this tour i talked to him i was like bro i'm thinking about doing like this comedic stand-up thing where i speak to artwork and he was like 
I <laughs> and so I talked to him through as I like, fuck and I was like I went to one of his shows and I watched him do one of his shows in improv and I was just like bliss blown away at how it's a fucking art eh, to be able to do what they do like I mine's completely like here and I've kind of got some of it but like to stand there and just and just do it like off that the bat. off the bat unreal it's actually fucking amazing to watch him do it and um i don't know if you've seen his um seen him do his stuff it's no. oh oh man you gotta who is the bro tell his name um, um, joe Send damon cool we're gonna go after joe man yeah bro uh, just oh, watch yeah. his stuff man like he, he he'll do shows where he'll turn up and the one that i went and he'll just go all right and he'll just go on and he'll just do it right there in front and just uh and i watched him because I was really interested in the way it works. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, this is so hard. Mm. This is a fucking art. Because to be there's able a to lot of timing involved. Eh? So yeah, much timing. Yeah, yeah. And so much crowd. Like, he just does it just for the crowd work. Just to work with crowd. And and it's actually, like, yeah. So I'm, I, all those comedians, like, I don't, I don't see myself as a comedian. At, like, at all but when i see the comedians i'm like holy shit that's fucking good yeah and i think the maori like that like i was saying like that maori sense of humor humor, it's it's fucking funny it's real it can just like cut you underneath the where you don't even just, you're like oh <gasps> yeah yeah oh, you get those artists in the back and that's why i say like the kitchen like in the at the back of the kitchen that that little like those little little like ah like those <laughs> things and in and especially in te reo maori as well like when people <laughs> like you know when we're in lumaki and and all you all you're allowed to do is speak te reo maori is um and you're in those tokumikimi like kind of things, it's when the funniest shit comes out. <laughs> it's just that no one like Parker can't understand what you're saying, but it is fucking it's downright dirty and She's hilarious. Yep. And it is, it's real chop like you at the knees. And it's real witty. <laughs> it's fucking the like into the all, it's really witty. Mm. Like the storytelling and what what yeah, just the way like they, you know, what a paru, a paru like dirt or like, but what paru can mean like in different contexts, like, <laughs> you know, like it's just like there's so many different ways because it's quite a visual language to put a kupu to something and then like stare them in the eyes and like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because they 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 they've got god oh you fucking you fucking you fucking fucking. man yeah. that, that that takes me to the language to yeah the real um how powerful it is and i i want to i want to put two things there how do you feel about the way that it's growing and people getting more interested in learning the language not just maori mm. but also a connection to the work that you do that caters for everyone i would say like mm. about pakiha wearing it so mm. how is that thing with the maori culture becoming a big thing oh it's like when you look at probably most one and around the country i'd say um way over 50 percent of the people that are in them are pakia like definitely or Tauiwi, yeah that that are coming in to to learn the to learn the language um, and it's especially, you know, in at, down at Lokoa, it's it's like they, their intake is unreal. You you are fighting for a spot to get into the into to one or Lokoa. It's um, and it's it's a beautiful thing because like, you know, forty fifty years ago, it, they had you know they were really working on it to try and. You know, and this this big plan of fuck it all man will happen. So, yeah, I mean, fuck, it's um, I'm 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 stoked that Parker and Toei are just are in there and willing to actually learn learn this language. I guess the what's kind of happened is that you know some Maori are, are starting to 
you know, when they're going to their places. And, and, and a lot of um, of those wānana will have um, Pākehā students that are in there that have been there for a few years that will go and talk to other Pākehā and Tauiwi students and just to kind of, uh, just to let them know, just, just remember that this is a language that Māori lost. So there are going to be a lot of Māori coming in here with a lot of kind of, um, you know, trauma around not knowing their own language. And there'll be park in here that know the language fucking amazing. So just to kind of, just to remember that, not to fuck a itty um, park out that are learning to do Māori at all, but just to make them aware that there are Māori that are coming in here that are, <coughs> are really fucking ma, they're really thing, and they and they want to learn their Māori, and, and it's, a, it's a bit of a, especially in the beginning stages, it, it can be, it's the fucking hardest thing you'll do as an adult going and learning your own language. Like, oh, it, yeah. It's the so hardest rough. fucking thing to do. I had, a, I, had a, I had a foundation of the language. So I went from like this to this real fast. Mm. But fuck. Um, and, and my idea was not great. I want to go back next year. Um, but it is probably the hardest thing you'll ever fucking do as Māori to go back and learn your own language at an adult level. But it also is the funniest fucking thing that you'll probably do in your life. I shit you not. I love that positive spin on that. It, it, it is the funniest thing you do because you have to lose all the inhibitions and all of that shit. You Shake have to patua te whakama and just fucking... Once that whakama leaves and you're like, oh, I fucked that word up or... Oh, I didn't put the tohu tor there. Or I mean, ke ke, not ke ke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of those things that, <laughs> all of those things that happen, they're fucking funny. Mm. Um, and if you if you get the chance to do it, and you know, and fall in love with your language, um. For me, it's finding the time, and that's the biggest thing: is finding the time to do it. Mm. Um, but if, yeah, hopefully next year I want to return back um, and and f- finish my tour, even though the piece of paper doesn't really. Oh. It's just being there, yeah. Yeah. just being hooky, present, my bro. And yeah, yeah, I gotta finish my tohu Atira Tohoki. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Gotta get the piece of paper. Yeah, and and the piece of paper. The piece of paper. But um, uh, for me, it's for my kids. I gotta prove. Yeah. I've gotta prove them. You, you finished something you started. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, <laughs> we had a, an amazing uh, teacher, um, Papa Sean, um, and he. When I walked in, he knew that I had somebody or underneath my belt. So he was like, no, 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 you're not going. So I wanted to go straight into Hekereo, which is the first year, Totoa Tai. And he's like, no, 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 you're going to Totoa Rua, bro. I was like, no, 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 you're going to Totoa Rua. So they put me they put me up and I it is like, there you go. And it was fucking hard, but it was the best thing that he actually did. So, yeah, I only, if I go back, I can do one more year and my tohu's done. But I'm like. I need at least another two years mm. in there. But, like, y- y- we're talking about Urumaki space. So yeah. for our homies here and whānau who might be listening who don't understand what that is, Urumaki is? Well, you, you, you can't speak Pākehā at all. And they lay the kawa down and that's it. I may have broken Urumaki. <laughs> 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 A couple of times. I mean it, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, never at the one at the one and probably worse. I did it at the Marae, but it was. <laughs> but like, there's a, there's a thing I'll say to Mari, and it it just needed to be done. Like it was because it was a it was an incident that happened. Yep, and the the person that it happened to was first year and didn't know what was going on or why we were laughing so hard so, you had to, do the old so to ease his his pain which is 
probably one of the funniest stories that's ever happened to me. And this happened during, <laughs> during going back and learning to do Māori. I had to break the new market because I had to tell him what <laughs> fucking oh. funny he was. And I was just like, bro, what? What were you thinking? And he was just like, oh my. And he, and the, and he, was, he was in Owakuni the other day. I told him about oh. it. And I was like, oh my God, did I do that? And I was like, how did you not do that? You were doing all the hands. And he was just like, oh. And then he realised it. And he was like, oh my fucking God. Oh. And it was just one of those things that was just one of the. And you One of say, many hey, funny things that happen. At Urumaki and Tautahe, you got a lot of hands and things going on with your team, I know, because... You're trying to... Um, the, it's the body language yep, yep. to express what you're trying to ask a question. Sometimes that body language comes <laughs> off really rude. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so it's one of those situations and I was just and I had to I broke it and I was like bro and then when he realised he was like oh my fucking wow. god yeah. and it became a joke for the entire year it was like me him and another guy yeah, we had this bro. personal joke between us that happened throughout the year and it was just um, you know and that's one of many many stories um, and anyone that has gone back as an adult to learn to deal Māori they'll have those stories about just those those times when you're like oh and it happens and you have to just eat it up and it's funny so you just like it. yeah it, you're way better for it but and you'll never fucking forget it ever again all that cooper all that but that's the thing and then you have good people around you to have a laugh about it yeah right there's no pressure there's no like you're fucking stupid you don't even know what you're saying like it's always positive yeah like, we're all making mistakes yeah because i feel like that's there's the problem people say oh it's harder to learn a language when you're older i'm like maybe not harder like for the plasticity of your brain it's just like we don't want to make mistakes yeah Adults don't want to put themselves in, in those situations of like, oh, I'm going to Can't put yourself in an up. unsafe space. Yeah, yeah. When, you, when you have your bros, <laughs> when you have people giving you that support, it just changes the game. Yeah. And that, and that's that's the thing about, uh, well, especially at Tawana Roko is that they they know, you know, and the, and the teachers there are just like, oh, Kate's fine. Kate's fine. Hari tone, hari tone. Yeah, all in the eyes, and they and they always say like the eyes when they're like shaking, they're going, but they don't know what they're saying. They're like, oh, yep, yep, I have no, no fucking idea. idea what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So does everyone get some more yokozo? Aye, aye. And it's like the funniest because all the all, all of the <laughs> teachers are like, they have no fucking <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah. But, Toto, but they're like, like, but they're still like. The Cut pie. All good. All right, pie. let's go jump off this cliff. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. In three years' time, we walk the stage and we have our two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they, yeah. Getting the the tohu, and, I mean, it's it's hilarious. Well, it's it's actually quite awesome because my mum, um, Parker, did the same tohu twenty years before I did. So she was one Kia of the only uh, the heke, heke Yep. Yeah. So um, she did that twenty years before I did, and we have the same little tohu from doing that. Um, but as a Pākehā woman doing that in the nineties, yeah, was a pretty was a pretty oh. massive thing. Yeah. So. And then, and then going on in her in her kind of the old journey. So, you know, my dad pissed off. She had three Māori boys and was like, oh, I'm going to put them in Kohanga. <laughs> so we were, yeah, we, we went to Kohanga. Yeah, so. I think your mama might need to give me some tips. I've got three Māori boys. Oh, um, right. I'm also Māori, but also just mama of three boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we were already enrolled, but once old boy fucked off um yeah she had to kind of take up the thing so she, role as well. yeah and mm -hmm. she had to and kohanga kura iwi and all of these things they're very whanau orientated so the way kohanga worked back then is that you did your time mm. so mum came into kohanga she had to be there for you know yeah, so she had to up. learn the language 
Eh? Era, no, era, every, or? Era, Cole. No, so she would come in um, just for like a certain amount of time. Okay. And they would cook and they would do that. That's Their how, mahi, whatever their koha yeah, was. Yeah, that's how they did it back then. Um, but yeah, then she just, she knew that to keep these, this culture going, she had to follow through. She had to do it as well. Mm. So pretty fucking, for a Pākehā woman in the 90s to go do that was was pretty hearty, actually. She got a lot of shit for it. I bet from Māori as well. I bet she did. And yeah. from her own. Yeah. But yeah. So it's like she had to kind of like, no, no, I've got this. We've committed here. Now we, I have to do my thing. And she still, today, does wānana, goes into things. Tēnā koe mama. Yeah, unreal, eh? It's just because she's got her grandkids now that are kura yeah. kaupapa and she's like, I need out my game in this. Yeah, she works at the kura. <laughs> like she goes there cool. and she does things. She's a scientist, goes and then does science with the kura. Man. So it's like, fuck, not even I I can do that. Like it's it's like pretty, pretty Nick like, level. holy shit. So yeah, the deal was amazing. It's, I just wish I had more time to, I you, you just have to, sp- fuck it, that's what I'm doing. You're speaking about your mama and your beautiful tamariki who are at Kura, uh, Kura Kaupapa in Nene. Yeah. What is the legacy you want to leave behind for your babies? Fuck everyone else and the political art and the platform, whatever you sit on. What is the most to-to-do thing, kia koe? For your babies, like, what is it that is going to be your legacy for them? Uh, for me, it's just to have for them to see what mana haki looks like. Chat for them to actually, oh, I don't have to have a nine to five job working for someone else. Killed it because I can just do it from home. Yeah, that, that would be the biggest thing that they. That they've been brought into a place where their parents do it all. Yeah, they Please don't. do. Yeah, because it's just, I, I, I don't think I could ever fucking work for anyone ever again in my entire life. Mm. Mm. I, and I, I don't want my life. kids to. You can collab. I'm sure you can collaborate. Oh, Collabs are co- always welcome. Collaboration is great, but. Work for someone like in the tenth that I'm. Nine not, to five, you owe me. Yeah, no, nah. I never, I, I never will go back to that. I don't think I will anyway. But yeah, for them to be to see us, and the fact that we can, um, whenever we want to, we can go. Hey, do you guys want to fucking go to the beach? <laughs> and they'll just be like, sweet. And and our older girl, well, Jet is following that now. Like she's like, I want to be a farrier. And we're like, sweet. We, after level two, you're done. Yep, she's sweet. like, sweet. Like, cool. Sorted. She's done. She's done. Me, get out of the system, girl. Yeah. We got you. Go, do what you want to do. Um, you know, ultra. Pr- I think it's ingrained in, in me, eh? It's like a very nutty tour. Characteristic. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that that yeah, I just like being able to work, and we have we have a pretty fun time, but we we get to do whatever the fuck we want to do, and there's no one that gets to. It might, it might make other people a bit ha that we're like oh yeah, but we're like not so fluid. That's just the <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's just the way it is. It's you know. Even in our gallery, when we had a, like, we never had hours on it. We had, like, decolonised hours. <laughs> we had a, a little sticker on our it's gallery. It's say decolonised hours. And it said decolonised hours. And they were, like, look at it like, what do you mean it's on decolonised <laughs> hours? It's like, we don't fucking have hours on our door. And it used to piss. Not just people that were to see us, but like all the shops around us because people would oh. come like, oh, why aren't they open? Like, when oh, you're actually in town. Open. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, and if, even now, like we, if we're there, we're there. If we're not, we're not. Like, But if we're not, we're probably off 
having fun doing this shit, like, you know, or like, yeah, but people, if, you know, they're very, but you gotta come in at fucking nine o'clock and you gotta leave at five and I'm like, fuck, man, mm, like, yeah. I got shit to do. I ain't fucking yeah. staying. You got all, a life. Yeah, man. So I, for my kids, I want them to know that you don't have to, you Leave don't actually life. have to work for anyone at all. You could actually just do whatever you want to do um, and be good at it and we and we'll just be there. You can always be here at the Fudd Air. So, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's my thing. Because a lot of people will be like, go to university, finish fucking there. Go get a job, fucking work for mm. some cunt, fucking twenty years. The fuck's that about? It wasn't yeah. until I was in my thirties when I finally kind of figured out what I wanted to do oh, in my life. I wish I learned like, this shit back when I was like, yeah, mm, it's just like mm, mm. I don't have to work for fucking anyone. Yeah, awesome. And just get to chill out at home. Admittedly, some of the greatest times in my life is when I haven't been working because of injury or what have you, and I've been doing my own thing. And that's when I've been my ultimate happiest mm. and most creative and everything snowballed and fallen into place. It's when you're living in that stupid. And that fear of the money, eh, that? that it won't be enough, that you won't get it. Yeah. But when, when you're in, in that situation of having oh, to yeah. do your shit to make it work, that's when you probably will make the most oh, because you yeah. get shit oh, moving. Oh, bro, yeah. I'm, yeah, I, fuck, we, we call them the cheese ears. That's what we call them. Oh, fuck, we worked hard, man. Like, um, I swear to God, we probably didn't have a break for about two years. Mm. It was every day for two years at least. And that was in the beginning when we decided, I was a teacher, I was a fucking high school teacher. And I decided one day, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, fuck, you know, and I thought I was... I was an educator. I thought I, you know, and I realized I'm dealing with a hundred other fucking kids and a hundred other fucking things. And my kids are like, you know, getting, you know, this, this percent of my time. Yep. You're a bit Fuck this, man. This is, and, 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 it, and I made the decision. I wasn't going to get a full time job the following year. I was going to be at point eight or something. Okay, yep. And I was like, I can't get a full time job. Fuck it. I've got this this other thing. It's just it's and, just and we were at the bottom. We were at the bottom of the barrel. Like we were um like fucked. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and and in the most fucked time, like poor as fuck, like so poor. Sink and or swim? Yeah, it was. It was sink or swim. And we were like, fuck it, let's open this gallery. Um Let's move back in with mom. <laughs> mm. So we moved back in with mom mm. for like eight months. Mia was knocked up good. Uh, yeah, so we had all the kids and we were like, fuck it, we moved home. And my brother was home with his kids. There were 11 people in our home. Wow. It was fucking. Was mum cooking? Oh, no, Mia's a great cook. Oh, yeah, um, Mia. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was fucking hard, and then we worked straight. I reckon it was for at least two and a bit years, um, getting that bit off the ground, and then we slowly just clawed our way out of the cheese years. We call it the cheese years because we couldn't afford cheese. Um, but oh, like true talk, yeah, no talk. How fucking expensive is cheese? Yeah, or milk? Yeah, but um, we got out of it, and then. It was graft. It was a lot of a lot of fucking work. Um, but now, like looking back at that, that was kind of seven years ago. Now looking back at it, I'm like, fuck. I would. I'm so glad we did it. Wouldn't have changed mm. it for a thing, eh? <clears throat> no, nah. mm. no. Nah, seriously, like now, I just like, I couldn't think of. It's so bad. But teachers will know. Like, it's just, mm. it's, I couldn't think of anything. It's a grind. It's it's a grind. grind. A teaching, those motherfuckers need to be paid, especially primary school teachers, early childhood teachers, fucking triple their pay. Holy shit. Like, it was, um, it was dire, man. Mm. And I was just like, fuck, this is crazy. Surely, um, surely he, 
you can pay these teachers a bit more. Mm. Like we were what you would class as like the work working poor. Mm. Yeah, that's we were fucked. Um, and and yeah, when I look and back so at how what many we, years ago was that? Probably where, where are we now? Two thousand. We opened the gallery in two thousand and sixteen. Okay. Yeah. So two thousand and fifteen came back home from Aussie. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was seven years ago. Yeah. But yeah, it's when I look back. And we've got the teachers' pay scale now in comparison to eight years ago. Is it gone up? I don't even know. Oh, slightly. Oh, real. Slightly, (laughs) but I don't know. So Leo is a high school teacher. No, I'm not. I'm or a, a drum I'm teacher. Like, yeah, so I'm not not a qualified teacher. Oh, I'm you're on, not? No, 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 oh, no. Man. Support staff. I know, right? It's even worse. It is. Let's save that story for another Sorry. show. <laughs> Don't make me cry. Sorry to throw you in the end, mum. No, 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 it's all good. Like, it's all yeah. good. My mum was a teacher and, you know, so I just, yeah, I just, yeah, I thought, oh, oh I'm going to be a teacher. <laughs> it was the only other mm. thing I thought I was going to be. But um, and I was all right at it, you know. But I just don't have the patience. I've and I found that out pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't have the. Fu- I can't. Yeah, I I love kids. <laughs> I love them the bits, but I don't have the fucking patience for fucking. Well, kids. especially when there's a system telling you how to go about things, yeah, right? It's so a lot of box ticking, yeah. a lot of admin bullshit, and yeah, I just think teachers need to be paid like triple. Because, yeah, for what they do Kill and that. the time that they take, I'm just like, people are like, but I go to all those fucking holidays. It's like, shit, man, yeah. you know how fucked off you are on school holidays? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that? <laughs> like, like, That's right. These fucking, these people are taking care of your kids you and get teaching the your kids of the year? and giving them like all this matauranga and all of their time and all of their energy. Get fucked. They need those holidays. And they should be paid way better. Like, mm. and yeah, I was at the bottom of the scale and I was, I became a, a number. I was like the, the people that get registered straight away and then get the fuck out of teaching because they realize that they're not, this is not the job for them. Um, Yeah, that, that was, I was one of those. I had a call to all last week with Mike King about how I've been struggling to finish my tohu. Yeah. Because I've been teaching unofficially for 10 years and uh, studying for the last couple. And he goes, oh, well, you obviously didn't think about uh, ever being successful or having any money for the rest of your life. And I was like, <laughs> and this is why I've struggled, Mike. You hear my pain. Um, it's hard mahi, man. It's like, hard mm-hmm. mahi. Yeah. It's, but like. I know, yeah. Love you, Fano. Yeah, I know. And some people are just those educators that are just, it's all here. Mm. They, they are genuinely like, it's not about them. They are actually are there just to educate people. Like mm. your. My boys hate it. <laughs> I don't My know. boys hate it. Like we live in a small community. Like go to the countdown or, or the movies or. or fire. Um, yeah. Fire. I killed a fire, man. I killed a fire, man. I killed it. I killed it. I'm just trying to get my kids out the car. I'm like, Psh. <laughs> oh. Mum, why do all the tamariki in this town know you? And I'm like, because I've taught all of them for the last however many yeah, at yeah, some yeah. point, you know. <sighs> Wish you'd hang out with us and not them. And I'm like, oh, sorry, <laughs> Bob, that's what pays our rent. Too. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the teachers, eh? Yeah. Big job. Oh, yeah. Massive mahi. It is massive money. Uh, oh, sorry. No, not money. mahi. Mahi, sorry. <laughs> it's not massive money. Either. But, um, yeah, they need, they need massive they need more money. Pay the teachers. Hurry up, National. You can't. Bro, can you take us through the... <laughs> Come on, National. Come on, let's do something. All right. Can you take us through the, the tour? So where are you going? Where where can we find you? Uh, on the tour? Yep. So the tour starts uh, Popo on the 2nd in Fitianga. Um, yeah. And then we... What, what do we do? We head to Tamaki Bakoto, uh for Saturday night. On the fourth, and then we go to Whangarei on the seventh, Tauranga on the ninth, Taranaki on the eleventh. That's the first head out. Good start to know where you have to be. Oh, great! I was just counting the days in between. 
Yeah, <gasps> yeah. And then we get like, yeah, we get a little four day, and then the seventeenth we're in um, in Hastings. And then we come back home for a little bit and then we're over down to Waiponamu. Yeah, so we'll be down in uh, Whakatū and Nelson on the 23rd. And then we head to Ōtautahi in Christchurch on the 24th. Come back and then our final show will be in uh, Pōneke on the 30th of November. Rockstar, man. Fuck it. Touring. Yeah, fuck yeah. Fucking <laughs> feel like Iron Maiden. Nah, it's just <laughs> round two. The, um, yeah, it's fucking never canceled. done anything like this, <laughs> eh? Hey? Oh, yeah. I wonder if you'll get cancelled. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or well, maybe I don't go anywhere after 50 younger. But uh, <laughs> nah. it's, uh, yeah, it's it's a different, it's a different. I've never done anything like this. So it's quite fucking nerve wracking, actually. What, not sober? Well, nah, yeah, nah. I've done that. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, to try to take on something like, like comedy. That's me, my bro. Like, it's, uh, more power like, to you, brother. <laughs> mm. What was I thinking? But um, it's 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 cool because the artwork's standing there, and I can speak yeah. all day you about speak that. To your mate. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the real shit. Um, it's just a different way. Like I said in the car, it's like that grassroots. Yeah. Um thing that I love doing because you know everyone sees you online and you know um but it's actually mean to um to go to go to the people um and do that grassroots mahi because I think people really f- appreciate the fact that you're like not sitting like a real weirdo in your mm. fucking gallery which I love doing and just tattooing around that you're actually you're going out and you're um, you're meeting new people like you guys and you sexy little beasts over there, whoop, whoop. Um, and meeting them and like having a court or and actually having like proper kanohi kids kanohi um, discussions oh, yeah. around your artwork. So it's um, yeah, I think it's it's fun. Plus, I get to go and come to beautiful places like this, That's like nice. just chuck the boards and the. Next to the artwork, <laughs> kind of use it as a way to cruise around. All it's, right. um, we'll yeah, be past that fucking musinga, I've got one last question, yeah. my homie. All right. What is your personal favourite piece of artwork that you have created? Your own one. Oh. Come on. Not fair. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Like, if you, oh. when, you, when, you, when you are constantly like working in a gallery and looking at your work, Every single day, mm. it is fuck. You get bored of it, eh? You're like, is it always like the new shit that you're like, and then? Yeah, no, no, no. It's the, the old shit. I'm like, oh, fuck. Mm. done with it. And one of our like, <laughs> one of our most like prized like best sellers, pe- best selling pieces is our P Y Waka piece. Oh, it's good. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and I tell this to people all the time, and if probably this is bad, bad publicity or whatever. I look at it, I'm like, fucking hell, really? Because I'm just like, I, I see it every day. I'm like, I yeah, yeah, the, it, the woven ones, the woven ones, yeah. and I'm just like, oh, for fuck's sake. And I think every artist has that, mm. has that like little. I'm talking about the one that I don't like the most. <laughs> <laughs> the one that everyone loves the most. But it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I oh, fuck yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it's but I tell you what, it, you know, it it it's a it it means so many to other people it has their own mm. they have their own um honoki tera me and that they they can connect to it in some way. And the stories that I hear from different people, I'm just like, that That piece is just, it is what it is. Um, the tummy one's pretty deep to my heart because it's, it's the first piece that I did. Um, so it will always be probably quite deep to my heart. But there's there's one in the home that no one's ever seen. Oh. So I have original pieces. That Love no it. One, yeah, there's, and, and it, is, it is part of a, a vision um, that I've wanted to do for many years. Um, 
And it just sits in our house at home. Nice. On the wall. And that's probably one of my favourite pieces. Only because it, it kind of honors to um, and is inspired by um, Ralph Hortiti, who's like my fave. Um, one of my fave Māori artists. So, yeah, it's, yeah that's, that's probably favourite for me of my own. But I've got many favourites from other artists. That sit in our house as well. So I bet like, I just wanted to know what your actual favourite of your own mahi was, my mm. bro. Yeah, yeah. It's it's probably that one there. Yeah. It sits in our house. Oh well my bro, um I need to make nui kia kwe moto uh wa kota make a fisi yanga to nui akupe. Oh kids fino wang ati hey. Hi. Um main yarns, main shans, bro. <laughs> Big fan. Um, I'm sure Leo is stoked with your mahi and you caught it off. No, 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 Yeah, nah, thank you for having me. It's been a blast. Cool, bro. Yeah, it's been man. been a blast. I don't even know what time it is. After 10 hours, more. we got some good yarns. Yeah. Like, you're still awake. <laughs> Just. <laughs> I don't even know what time it is. Eh? Oh, it's open mic night, so we might get to hear our uh, ear who call. Oh, no, we're good. Oh, cool, cool. Man, thank you so much. Good luck tomorrow. We'll be there at yeah. the Monkey House. So for the people watching us, if you are in Fitzyanga, if you are in the Coromando, if you are around, mm. head to the Monkey House Theatre, the coolest alternative place in the Coromando. Yes, sir. Would you like to say something, Taylor, on the mic for us? Uh, Jesus, sponsors, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm actually getting there for sure. Uh, thank you so much for cooked coromando, cooked Mexican food. If you are coming to the coromando, now is the time to get some Mexican food. Delicious. How was that? Fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. Fish taco. Make as per usual. It's the first fish taco I've had that hasn't been chopped up. And then, you know, it was a fucking solid piece of fucking eco. There you go. How good. Thank you. Yeah, nah, it was... Um, and I and if I see fish tacos on any menu or shrimp tacos, you go to it. I'm fucking going for straight away. And especially if I see a fish when I saw fish tacos, it's like fish tacos. <laughs> yeah, you replied and very then you quickly. And you said it. And you're like, is, is that the fish <laughs> taco? I was like, yeah, because normally it is all chopped up and stuff. That was a big, solid fucking Man. piece of fish. Holy shit. Man. Man. Thank you. Cooked Coromando. And they are having a Day of the Dead party this Saturday, the 4th and. Mr. Leonardo Magri and stupidly will be jamming. We're going to have a good time. Hey, did you know that? Yes, I did know that. I'm coming along for the um, Jugs Margaritas. Okay. Oh, and, I thought and, you were and, saying they were going. Oh, sorry. Oh, and, and the good sounds. Thank you. <laughs> From 4 p.m. It's going to be a good party. So head to cook. It's going to be fun. And Peninsula Motel. Fred, thank you so much. If you are coming to the Coromandel and you're looking for accommodation, Peninsula Motel, 93 Albert Street. They even got a couple of cool houses where yes. Mr. Horry is staying. You didn't even get the chance to see the house. No. But you was, will. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'll be fucking laying out pretty fucking soon, probably. Left, thank you so much left his card went straight to my car like no no rest for the weekend but thank you so much peninsula motel and of course beautiful coromines magazine if you are in the coromando you will be lucky to find the printed copy of this magazine that we publish the flock media group it's made by the community so we tell stories from the community if you want to send a piece we really appreciate it and if you are a smart business that want to advertise in a beautiful piece that stays in cafes and establishments because it's colorful and mm. it tells cool <laughs> God, I'm sorry, bro, bad timing. <laughs> get, in touch with, get in touch with Coral Minds, Coral Minds that is it. And obviously... The best we have is, is the colors. <laughs> well, the colors, the colors are pretty good, right? The colors are pretty good. And we have an online and audio version because accessibility matters and we work as like we work a lot. As Hori said, two years nonstop. We know how it goes. We can relate. So we're putting something beautiful for the community and the community is backing us up. So make sure to check us out. Coromines.nz. We'll be back on Tuesday with Mr. Luke from Luke's Kitchen. How cool. Kakite. Kia ora, kakite.